All right, welcome. Uh, what I'm gonna, uh, what I planned on doing is doing like a 10, 15 minute little improv. I kind of preset some stuff and then we'll do a little Q and A, whatever. And then maybe another performance if we're feeling it. So, any questions before we start? It could get loud. So feel free to use the space and move around and check things out as well. Um, here we go. Thank you. 
Open it up to questions for now. I have one. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, does you laying it down affect um, any of the mechanics or like, is there any gyroscopes affiliated or accelerometers or anything? No, but I did notice this is definitely a thing. Wait, it was more on this panel. So the spring reverb in here is activated, of course, by, it's a physical reverb, so it's, it, it's a little more interesting. I was getting even feedback from it um, through the PA to vibrating here uh, because it's physically touching more the surface, which is touching the floor, which is then touching the speakers. Touching yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's a wild beast sometimes. Uh, otherwise, no. Um, there is one thing I was going to get. Uh, my wife and I work um, with this dancer a lot, and there's these, this one module that you can get where it's got these um, little pucks that the dancer would wear, and it can control this, this, and then this. So it's like six dimensions, and so if, as the dancer's moving, they would be controlling my synthesizer, which would be totally amazing and wild. Uh, but I haven't done any of that, no. <laughs> and then, uh, I have another question, like, does the wood affect any of the electronics, like, in the sense of, like, is it more of a fire danger? You know? Oh, sure, yeah. But that's just all, you know, circuitry and getting into... Yeah, I mean, this wood gets hot because the power supply is right here, but it's, it's fine. It hasn't burned yet after five years. Okay. And then what's the longest you'll keep it on, like, no, nah, generally not. It's not tube, so there's no no bad thing of turning it off and back on. Um, it's all solid state, so eh, I'll, I'll turn it off generally when I am not using it. My last question, did you record this set? Yep. Yeah, I'll post it to the YouTubes. Oh, wait, what's the YouTube channel? What's that? Oh, I have my own, the Norman Conquest is my artist name. Any questions about the layout here? Guess so I can. What is that bottom right module? It's getting like fixed signal? Yeah. Uh, what, what is that thing doing? So it's a drum sample module, four channels. So we've got the red, the yellow, the green, and the blue, or blue and green. And so typically I have kick drum, and I can just like change my kick drum right here and also the pitch and decay. Well, it's the drum voice part of the drum machine. So, and then I can change it even further. Whoops, wrong channel. Damn it. There's all sorts of, and I've loaded my own samples in here. That's what this cheat sheet is for. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a good one. Woo. There you go. Oh. That part earlier where he was just hitting the sub bass and yeah. he was like riding, that was pretty dope. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, I was like, well, let's, let's explore this PA a little bit yeah. and see what it can do. And so I basically cranked up the resonance on both my filters so that it was self-oscillating. Uh, I got to be careful because I don't want to blow anything up. Um, let me try this. Come on, there you are. Yeah. Uh, and of course these Myers are two 18s each and I assume thousands of watts. So we've got, we can push some air in here. Um, 
that's it. It's just what uh, banks are my sounds versus the other sounds that are in there. So I guess I could just give a tour of this. So that's the drum voice. I've got this tiny little silver guy right here. You can't really see it too much. But that's uh, the drum sequencing, sort of. Uh, it's at least doing the snare and the hi-hat and doing something else with the other channel. Uh, then this right here uh, is what's called a stochastic sequencer. So it's not random. It's probability-based. So let's just say, um, give me a second. Get it. So that's the main jam in this whole situation. Um, so basically right now, you can't, you can't really see, but it's only playing the note A right here, and so I can give it A and B. Wait, come on, other octave, and then it goes back to A, B. But it's also doing octaves right here, so it's probability of different octaves and probability of different note durations. So like, I can do only eighth notes. Here, let's just do. Yeah, so just an eighth note, not random, but probability-based sequencer. Does it give you the option to randomize? No, no, no. The, the difference is just from the beginning, uh, random is not the same thing as stochastic. Stochastic is saying we could make this, we could go this path or this path, and we have 50% probability of going down each. So it's choosing the paths, whereas random is just like, there's five million paths. We could go this direction or that direction, but stochastic is choices. So right now it's only 100% the note A, but then I want to do 100% note E. So now they're both 100%, which equals 50%. So over time, it's going to be equally distributed between the two notes. Just like if you flip a coin, eventually you'll have as many paths as many times. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So with this, I've got four channels. I just got this expander. So A, B, C, and D, and I can modify those on the fly. It's way too much fun. That, that module, as soon as I saw it, I was like, yes, please. Thank you, sir. That's one of those, Yeah, it's this English company called Stochastic what? Instruments. Uh, See ya. Um, I mean, the, the problem with this stuff, it looks fancy and it's great and it's a lot of fun. It's really expensive. It's a bad habit. I don't recommend anybody getting into it. Um, you know, very, very expensive habit. But yeah, you can get all of these that are commercially available. Then we go right here, and this is really kind of the heart of the whole thing. So I've got my clock, which is then divided and multiplied. So right now, the sequencer is clocked from this channel. So I can make the sequence have a slower clock, so, or faster, but it's all related to the master clock, which is this right here. And I can just make that go bananas and it's still gonna divide equally that clock. Oof, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> okay, so that's dividing the clock and, or, or multiplying. And then right next to it is tied together with it a low frequency oscillator. Basically, whatever clock division this is doing, it's outputting an LFO that's in sync with that. Um, which, okay, that is going to here. So you see the red blinking light right here? That, I can make it a triangle shape or a sawtooth or very, very short pluck, yeah. And then the division. And like that, that still reminds me, even the lights still reminds me of like close encounters. Oh yeah. The synth in that movie is modeled, or is this one. The, the, so I was thinking, yeah. I played it this morning, I was like, that still reminds me of the Right, so he said, he said that, so then just to the right of that, I'm only using it today to process drums, but it's a granular synthesizer. It's super wild. It hasn't been behaving today. I've been trying to play with it, but it's 
for some reason I can't get back to the mode where it just slices and dices beats on the fly, that was my favorite mode, and for some reason it forgot what mode it was in. That's not the dual ADSR, right? That's a little bit of left Yeah, the dual ADSR is to the right. So let's see, here's the drums are feeding into that. Uh, oh, there's no drums. It's being a weirdo today. Uh, freeze is, okay, off of there. Okay, it's got all these modes and all these stupid button presses to get it to the right mode, but then sometimes it works properly and sometimes it just has a mind of its own. And right now it's just not giving me any love. Oh. How long did it take you to make this? Just a second. Um, well, the, this part and the case, six months, and then a lot of these modules I've built, some of them I've bought, but I don't know, a year, but also life and child and job and everything. So you could do it yourself if you dedicated yourself, just the top part and the case, you could do it probably in a couple of three weeks, very focused attention. And then just because I needed more ADSRs, I got two ADSRs right there and then a tiny little filter right there and then a VCA, voltage controlled amplifier. And so the three voices that are my synthesis are being controlled by, the volume is being controlled by the ADSR, which is then controlling the VCA. So it's giving these fades and here, let me just get the, oh, that's too fast. Mm -hmm. Is that voltage control not something to help sound entirely in the uh, I could get a limiter or a compressor built into here, but I just don't have space. And, and there's always on boards c compressors and stuff. How easy would it be for you to actually do something like that for you, like you put something up or? Uh, I mean, I know the system pretty well. I've worked here before, so I, I felt pretty safe even doing extreme stuff like, like, this where it's like oh oh yeah yeah I don't I know that won't blow it well the, you're talking about the sound system or you're talking about your, your synth oh the synth can't be broken really easily you can't short anything on that no like that? Okay. no not unless I actually like got a piece of metal and shoved it into the circuit board right there yeah. that might might do something um so yeah, ADSR filter, which is for the drums, actually. Uh, let me play some drums. Oh, sorry. Wow. Hello. Can be very juicy. Uh, then the VCA, I told you all that. Then the power supply is over here and a MIDI to CV converter. Um, the main synth though, real quick, it's a very famous iconic design, but we've got one oscillator, two oscillators, three oscillators, and they're all color coded. So green is green right there, and orange is orange. Uh, where'd you go, buddy? No? You're not playing? Oh. Very minimal today. All right. And then the third oscillator is pink. Then the filter goes to here or here. I'm using it right there. Uh, VCA, or the, the ADSR is right here, and that's all orange. So it shows up there, there, there. And it can also control the pitch of the oscillator. So something like, let's see. Let me get a more straight. Okay, let me switch. Okay, there we go. Can make really amazing kick drums. Oh yeah, like 808s for sure. Is there a way to pack a fourth oscillator? Yeah, I've, I could have an oscillator down here that 
goes into the mixer right here that's part of the filter but i just don't i don't need more than three oscillators generally at a time oh yeah uh then there's a ring modulator which is a lot of fun uh it's over here and so it mixes the the normal thing that goes into it is vco1 and vco2 and it sounds whoa and then I can, of course, go. What's that? Ring modulator takes the uh, sum and the diff or the addition of the two waves and the subtraction of the two waves, makes them atonal-ish generally. Um, what else? That's about it. There's the spring reverb over here. But it sounds pretty good. Uh, the one modification I did, you can't, you can barely see this label right here, but the reverb is post fader. So if I do that, it's terrible. It's like, oh, the, the reverb just went away. So what I did was, let me make it even slower. Okay, so then what I did is I can, I can give oh, one. It, it has the tail attached to it still. Well, kind of like on even a mixer board, if you like have a, an effect going and you pull out the channel, it's still tailing off and stuff. Yeah. Which is nice. Exactly. So this is perfect for a horror movie right now, though. Oh, oh yeah. Very appropriate. October. Have you ever done any work for a film? No. 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 Oh, Just, is that something you're interested in? Mm. No. no, music, just for music's sake. Yeah. Creepy music for creepy music's <laughs> sake, sure. Right on. If you meet Lowry, David Lowry, he's done a lot of stuff that will be over in commercial. Okay, yeah, yeah. So then, let's see. I um, don't think there's anything else really going on here too much. Anybody want to play it, I guess? One of the, my favorite things doing when I was learning synthesis was to have multiple people play the synth at the same time and just like, what's going on here? And then somebody else does something and you're kind of fighting, but kind of collaborating. I'm not a modular synth guy. Let's, let's do it. Here's what you want to. Let's left to right. Okay. So oscillator one, oscillator two, oscillator three. Yep. And then we're going into the mixer here, which goes through the filter. And then there's the resonance for the filter. And the noise right now is feeding in there. Uh, now oscillator three. I'm scared. No, don't be. So, so orange it. would be oscillator two, right? Yep. Technically. Yeah, All right. Get it back to um, you want to pick oscillators? Yeah, I'll do the yellow one. Okay. Okay. Let's hold the Sequence A, which is controlling that lowest frequency one. Yeah, the heat. So if you want it, well, let's make it clock faster. Okay. Yeah, I forget which clock it is. I think it's. No? Uh, uh, it's the yeah. Uh. So now it's the weighting of yeah, C, E, and E. Then these are the octaves, so right now it's playing middle, octave higher, second octave higher, or octave lower, second octave okay, lower. Okay. So. And then, note subdivision right here. So. Thank you. Thank 
Thank you. So then up here is one sixteenth. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, wait, one sixteenth, one eighth quarter, half, one whole note, and then two full notes. Okay, so is it like probability yeah. that I'm increasing? Yeah. Okay, so right yeah. now there's already something. So if you want to make sure it's just like a six note sequence, turn yeah, everything down but that one. Gotcha. Yeah. So now it's always going to be that. If I turn this up a little bit, there's a yeah. chance I'll get a half note. Again. Yeah. Maybe ten percent or something. Might, yeah, there you gotcha. Go. But it's oh, also okay. probabilizing the octaves. Okay, so then that's also the same system yeah. where I can. Yeah. Okay, so let's try to get some bass going here. Yeah, yeah, those other two are very intense. And then if you want, to, oh, the drums are.
Okay, so there's still a chance that it gets these? Is this amplitude or is it probability? That's probability. probability. You can also take so why is it still triggering these guys? Uh, oh, because we did a loop. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so then... Okay, now I... Okay, got gotcha. it. Okay. Yeah, not yet. Oh, there we go. Huh. Oh, no, we're in a weird mode. Ah. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Cool, okay. 
then technically these in relation just control the... The kick is not attached to the kick because I was doing four on the floor. Okay. That's the <laughs> kick drum drum. 
then at a certain point, if you use a drum and you trigger it at audio rate, it becomes its own weird tone. Yeah. Which is really bizarre. So then the speed of the sequence controls the pitch. <laughs>
It's a trimmer? Potential, you could like put a potentiometer in no, there? No, 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 it's a, there's a trimmer potentiometer inside there that you have a special screw uh, to calibrate oh. this filter, or like something, I guess. Yeah, the filter calibrate to one volt per octave with the keyboard CV, right? So that if you uh, use the CV, you can have the filter track at one volt per octave, but okay. you have to tune it. So all of these are tuning the synth. Places. You hear that? I, I hear said. It. I said potential. Yeah, look at you. You're, you're, you're teaching you know me words. something. You're talking Shit. about this stuff? Inside there, there's a trimmer potentiometer. A very small, tiny version of a potentiometer. Yeah, like small and blue usually. Yeah. With like a little. You don't need to touch with it. Touch it most of the time, but when you need to calibrate it and make it play in tune again. And at that point, do you have to take this whole thing off nope. and do it, or you nope. can just stick? That's the what thing the little holes there. are for, so cool. you can get a little right, tiny here. screwdriver. You see it in there? Oh yeah. Okay. It's yep. a little screw. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Little tiny guy. I'm kind of surprised it had a station shop list for some reason. That was the original. Yeah. That was the original? Yep. Wow.